But thinking along the lines, you know, the, if, you, if you get on the internet and look and ask, uh, you know, the search for information on growing lights, you find a whole tremendous array of different things, and some of them are pretty costly. I mean, some of them are uh, units that are, that are several, several, several hundred dollars for one little unit. Uh, you can also find different types of, of, uh, of what you might call uh, fluorescent tubes, uh, LED tubes, and things like that. Uh, for various uses, you know, some say they can be used for plants, others they don't mention plants. Uh, again, a lot, one of the problems, if you're going to start doing something like this, you know, to set up a light system, grow your plants, uh, you know, you need to decide what, what lighting to use. And the simplest thing, if you can find something local and reasonably, reasonably uh, inexpensive and all, that would be the optimal, optimal situation, okay, you know, rather than having to... Spend, out, spend a lot of money and order things off the internet and then you get it and then you find out it's not right, you know, those kind of problems. So, so I've been doing a little bit, I guess I'll call it dabbling, uh, comparing some different types of lights. And on this, this is what I've had set up and in, in, actually it's in my office, in the extension office in Durant. Uh, and that has three different types of lights. The first one, closest that way, is just a, a standard LED shop light. The next one is a uh, fluorescent uh, fixture and it's fitted with tubes that are called active spaces daylight bulbs, okay? So that's what, and I, they either came from Lowe's or Walmart, one of the two, I don't. And then in the back, there's, there's a, it has fluorescent tubes that are called plant and aquarium, okay? So that's what I started working with, those three, and found some, some uh, really big differences in these lights and how effect, how, how well they do. I'm not gonna go through all that. You know, you have it there so you can read through the results. Uh, but anyhow, this or a while back, and, and partly thinking about this meeting, and partly some, I want to continue doing work here. Uh, that, so that initial work was all lettuce. I want to look at some other cool season crops that people might want to be starting plants on this time of year. Okay, and you can do it. You can just plant them outdoors. Some of these things, but you know, you, like this year, we had some some pretty cold temperatures early in October that might have been pretty hard on seedlings like that. Had been they'd been planted in the field. So most of these things here. Uh, what I've got in this demonstration is there's carrots, two different types of lettuce, two different, uh, there's a Chinese cab, actually two Chinese cabbages, uh, then a couple different varieties of spinach, and some cilantro, okay? So I uh, basically just want to take a look, using the same lights I used in the lettuce trial, same type of lights, see how these other plants would respond to those. And if anybody wants to go up closer and look at it, we can, but basically, on this end where the stakes are, that was under the, uh, get it up higher, hopefully they won't fall out. Where the stakes are, that was under the LED shop light. Uh, yeah, okay. In the middle here was the, the active spaces light, and then down here was the, uh, the uh, plant and aquarium light, okay. Uh, basically, the, one of the big differences here, uh, under the plant and aquarium light, the plants have gotten kind of, and they're about three weeks old, I guess, they've gotten kind of tall and spindly right away. Whereas, and this is one of the important things you're looking for when you're starting plants, you don't want them to get tall and spindly, you want to, you want to control that height. So, so both of the, uh, the shop light and the active spaces light did a pretty good job of, of keeping those plants short. Now some of these, the cabbages, those would be big enough to be transplanted already. Uh, lettuce, another few, maybe another week or so, it'd be ready to go. Uh, similar for the spinach, another, another week or so. so. So uh, basically the bottom line is if, you, if you're, thanks Micah, if you're finding you'd like to try to do something like this, start some of your plants indoors under these lights and these, I mean all of these light fixtures are, uh, the, shop light, the LED shop light was $20. I think the others, your bulbs might be $10 a piece and, and $15 for the fixture, so, uh, so reasonably inexpensive, okay. Uh, but if, you, if you're thinking you want to try, try some of these sort of things, you've got this little bit of information here. Uh, start, start, don't wait until it's time to start your plants to put, it in the, put them in the garden. I'd go ahead and start in advance and do some trial runs with the things you're going to plant, maybe tomatoes or peppers. Go ahead and start as soon as you can to do some trial runs. See which lights work best for you. Uh, Another, another point is these are, these are not real high intensity lights. You, in a lot of greenhouses, you'll have lights that are up high. Uh, different types are being used, but they're very high intensity, use a lot of electricity. You can have those lights, you know, five feet above your plants and you'll still get enough light intensity at the level of the plant. These are much lower intensity, so you wanna get those 
lights right down close to the plants, okay? As you, as you increase that, the height, that the, the light intensity drops off real quickly. So and you just gradually, gradually raise them up as the plants get taller if you need to. So.